Matisse and Wickard and Lair, and this is Louisiana automobile subrogation, the nuts and the bolts. Much of the content of this seminar is adapted from and can be found in the Automobile Insurance Subrogation in All 50 States Handbook, written and published by Gary Wickard of Matisse and Wickard and Lair. If you don't already have a copy of this, I would I'd definitely encourage you. It's very helpful. You can order a copy of it through our website at mwl-law.com. During the webinar, I'll be asking a trivia question, probably about halfway through. The first one to answer the question correctly will win a Matisse and Wickard and Lair subrogation book of their choice. You can answer the question through the question pane on the control panel or by emailing Jamie Breen at jbreen, that's J and then B as in boy, R-E-E-N, at mwl-law.com. I'll provide the answer and announce the winner at the end of the webinar. Jamie will follow up with the winner after the webinar to find out which book you want. So let's get to our content. Uh, why is automobile subrogation important and, and critical? Uh, the statistics are, are fairly mind-blowing. We've got 275 million cars um, on the road in the United States, more than any other country. We have 22 million and change licensed drivers, approximately 25%, which is a huge number, of which are uninsured. We have more than 7 million automobile accidents in the United States annually, with a financial toll of $300 billion. 3 million people are injured in the United States annually. 45,000 um, people have been killed annually. It works out to about 115 a day. Just auto property damage annually alone gets to $35 billion. Passenger auto liability claims annually are $70 billion, and collision claims annually are $40 billion. And what about Louisiana? In Louisiana, as of 2010, um, we had uh, 2,759,120 licensed drivers, and about 5 to 10 percent of them were uninsured. Um, however, if you've done any business in Louisiana, um, you'll notice that a lot of that concentration of uninsured drivers and, and also the accidents tends to be in the New Orleans area. What kind of coverages um, are we going to handle today? Um, most of the, uh, the, the general kind of coverages that we have in Louisiana are property or collision coverage, liability coverage, med pay coverage, and uninsured, underinsured motorist coverage. Collision covers or property coverage um, is first party coverage which generally pays for the cost of repair or replacement of the insured's vehicle when the vehicle has been damaged in a motor vehicle accident. This form of coverage is quite often the precursor to a subrogation claim. Often insureds will make a claim on their own policy for damages to their vehicle even though a third party has caused the accident. In that case, the insurer, insurer can pursue the third party to recover property damages via subrogation. Liability is also an important coverage in Louisiana in and in regards to an automobile insurance policy. Uh, it covers the insured for liability when the insured is involved in an accident which covers bodily injury um, or property damages um, which causes property um, damages or bodily injury to a third party. Policies typically offer a limit for each of these uh, claims as well as an aggregate limit arising out of the occurrence. Um, in Louisiana, we have um, fairly low liability limits which are required. Um, we've got bodily injury liability limits of $15,000 um, per claim and $30,000 in the aggregate um, uh, per occurrence. And then we have a property coverage of $25,000. MedPay coverage pays medical bills of a third party involved in an accident with the insured and also includes passengers of the insured um, who are injured in an accident. Limits for med pay are typically very, very low. It's also optional coverage in Louisiana. Now, you haven't heard me mention too much about personal injury protection or PIP coverage, and that's because we don't have that in Louisiana. It's, it's a form of a no-fault coverage that provides payments for personal injuries um, sustained by the insured or third parties. But again, um, we're not going to spend a lot of time on that because we don't really have that in Louisiana. Uninsured or underinsured motorists is a, a very uh, common and very 
important coverage in Louisiana due to the uh, uninsured drivers that are on the road. Uh, UM or UIM coverage provides payment of medical expenses, lost wages, and general damages to the insured when the insured is involved in a motor vehicle accident caused by a third party, uh, where the third party either has no liability insurance or has inadequate limits of liability. Uh, it, again, there's, there's a lot of uh, these drivers on the roads, especially in the New Orleans area. As a result, uh, because this is so important, Louisiana has strict laws concerning waiver of UM or UIM uh, coverage. Uh, the payments are limited um, in that they must be in excess of any third-party liability insurance available, um, and there's usually a separate UM or UIM limit on the policy. And some examples of, uh, in terms of how difficult it is to waive, um, it's very strict. You have to use a certain form that is provided by the Department of Insurance. You can't vary from the form. Um, courts will look at things like whether or not um, the insured actually initialed and signed off on the waiver or whether uh, an insurance agent did it or a secretary in the office did it without the actual person um, with uh, the authority to do it. Um, it's, uh, it's very strict and it's very uh, scrutinized after the fact. Let's talk about subrogation generally. Um, Louisiana is a civilian state and that means that um, most of our laws are statutory. Um, we have case law that interprets those statutes, but most of the, uh, the laws themselves are statutory. So we have Civil Code Articles 1825 to 1830, which talk in general about the, um, about the cause of action and the theories behind subrogation in Louisiana. I'm not going to read those statutes to you. You can certainly uh, look them up, but that is the, those statutes are the basis for our subrogation law. We don't have equitable um, subrogation in Louisiana. Um, Louisiana law recognizes only contractual, um, also called conventional subrogation, and statutory subrogation. Contractual meaning arising out of the contract, and statutory obviously arising out of statutes. 1825 of the Louisiana Civil Code defines subrogation as the sub substitution of one person to the rights of another, and specifies that it may be conventional or legal. Article 1855 of the Louisiana Civil Code further solidifies the conventional and legal nature of subrogation in Louisiana by providing that a performance rendered by a third person affects subrogation only when so provided by law or by agreement. The import of this for automobile insurers in Louisiana is that the policy or plan language must contain adequate subrogation language because there's no right of equitable subrogation for insurers. In the absence of a provision in the insurance policy granting subrogation to the insurer, the insured may collect from a third-party tortfeasor and retain all that he's been paid by the insurer, producing a double recovery. If the insurance policy so provides, Louisiana also recognizes the right of an insured to reimbursement from an insured if the insured makes a third-party recovery. The distinction between subrogation and reimbursement is important in Louisiana. A right of subrogation provides an insurer a right to pursue a third party on its own, whereas a, whereas a reimbursement right does not allow the insured to proceed against the third party. Um, they can only uh, get their money back from the insured itself under reimbursement. And of course, we have general purposes of subrogation. Um, it holds tortfeasors responsible. It prevents a double recovery usually, and it holds down insurance premiums by um, allowing the, um, the loss um, history of the insured to, uh, to be better off than it would be otherwise. Louisiana is somewhat unique. We are a pioneer in direct action statutes. A direct action statute is a statute that allows a direct action or lawsuit to be filed against an insurer. In most states, you can only sue an insured. You can't sue their liability insurer by name as well. Um, absent some sort of a assignment or other coverage um, kind of issue. But in Louisiana, you can always, always sue an, an insurer. Um, generally, a third party sues both the insured and the insurer together. Um, although, although the insurer will definitely be named in a lawsuit if there's a coverage issue, um, quite often plaintiffs name both the insured and the insurer even where there's no coverage issue in order to publicize to the judge and the jury that their third party um, insurance involved, or at least to attempt to, um, to obtain a collectible judgment directly against the insurer, or simply to increase the expenses of the defense. By, um, because quite often um, an insurer will have to name separate counsel for the, um, for the insured and for itself um, if there's any kind of a preservation of rights that's been issued. 
A plaintiff can only sue the third party insurer without naming the insured where the insured is bankrupt, insolvent, cannot be served with process, or the cause of action is for an offense between children and their parents um, or between married persons, um, when the insurer is an uninsured motorist carrier or when the insured is deceased. And this provides a great benefit in pursuing subrogation. It's very often in some of these claims that you cannot find um, the insured or locate the insured or maybe the insured is deceased or you have some other problems with service. Under those circumstances, you can, you can sue the insurance company, the liability insurer, directly. Medical payments or med pay subrogation um, is, a, is allowed in Louisiana, but it's not mandatory. Insurers are free to offer it if they wish. While offered, it generally, or when offered, it generally covers reasonable expenses incurred for medical and funeral expenses and covers the named insured and any other person occupying the insured vehicle while the vehicle is being driven by the named insured or any other person that has the named insured's permission. Um, the uh, med pay benefits made by the automobile insurer may be subrogated provided the policy contains the appropriate subrogation language. This right of recovery and reimbursement must arise conventionally from the terms of the policy or pursuant to Louisiana subrogation statutes. One of these statutes in Louisiana um, regarding MedPay is Louisiana Revised Statute 22,1881. That statute governs the reimbursement um, of monies paid to health insurers under automobile medical um, provision, medical payment provisions. It provides that no health insurer can seek reimbursement from an insurer providing automobile medical payment coverage without obtaining the prior written consent of the insured or the member. Now, if they don't respond, um, nine months after the day of the accident from which the medical claims arise, the health insurer may seek reimbursement um, from the medical payments insurer for only the outstanding balance um, remaining under the automobile policy for medical coverage. Uh, this doesn't apply to Medicare Advantage plans or, or self-insured plans, and the provisions also do not impair or prohibit an insurer from seeking reimbursement of monies paid pursuant to an insurance policy plan or, or self-insurance fund, provided the total amount to the, be reinsured shall not exceed the amount actually paid by the insurer. If you want more information about, uh, about this or um, regarding um, other states, um, on our um, firm website, we do have a chart, MedPay slash PIP subrogation in all 50 states, that you can find on that website and uh, use as a resource. Again, PIP subrogation is not uh, an issue in Louisiana, so we're going to skip through that. Uninsured, um, underinsured subrogation. Um, that is governed by Louisiana Revised Statute 22, uh, 12954. And that statute provides that in the event of payment to any person under the coverage provided by the section and substantive to the terms and conditions of such coverage, the insurer making such payments shall, to the extent thereof, be entitled to the proceeds of any settlement or judgment resulting from the exercise of any rights of recovery of such person against any person or organization legally responsible for the bodily injury for which such payment has been made. Um, now, what we're talking about there, of course, is a UM insurer which pays UM benefits, has a right of subrogation in Louisiana to go after the third-party tortfeasor. Sometimes, um, obviously, there's not going to be a lot there. Um, the whole reason UM insurance is paying is because there are inadequate or, or no limits. But oftentimes, UM insurers still want to pursue that third party and, uh, and collect a judgment against them, um, get them to pay them over time. Or maybe there are some low liability and limits that have not been collected by the insured that the UM insurer wants to go ahead and, and go after. Um, the uh, rights of subrogation in those circumstances are no greater than those of its insured. Um, if the UM insurer pays the whole obligation, it is completely subrogated to the insured's rights against the tortfeasor. If the UM insurer pays only part of the obligation, such as when it pays its policy limits, which are less than the total amount of damages, it is partially subrogated to the insured's rights. In a partial subrogation scenario, the insured is paid in preference to the UM insurer to ensure full recovery for the accident victim. Now, although this is a little bit beyond the scope of this seminar, um, this is an appropriate place to note that um, subrogation, you, you do have subrogation against a UM insurer in Louisiana. Typically, that arises um, where you've got a workers' compensation lien and they are going after the UM insurer. Um, 
But although it's allowed, it doesn't really generally have any effect because Louisiana also allows the UM insurer to exclude a workers' compensation insurer from pursuing subrogation. So as long as that exclusion is in the UM policy, there's not going to be any subrogation against the UM insurer um, by a workers' comp insurer or a health insurer or, or another kind of insurer. And invariably, um, in Louisiana, they always always have that in their policy. Collision or property subrogation in Louisiana. The most common form of automobile subrogation in Louisiana is when an automobile insurer pays for damage to an insured's vehicle in an accident pursuant to its collision coverage. Usually, the insured has a relatively small deductible and does not have a lot of incentive to pursue a third-party claim on its own. Therefore, it's incumbent upon the automobile insurer to pursue its own subrogation action against the responsible third-party tortfeasor. Once again, the automobile insurer is stepping into the shoes of its insured and is burdened by its insured's potential comparative fault and other defenses. One such defense in Louisiana is the no-pay, no-play statute. Louisiana's no pay, no play statute bars an individual from a tort recovery in an automobile accident if that individual did not maintain the minimum 15,000, 30,000 of liability coverage. While the automobile insurer pays collision, or when the automobile insurer um, pays collision damages to the insured um, who does not carry liability insurance, insurance uh, the insurer is not absolutely barred from a third party recovery but they are barred from recovering the first 15,000 of property damages. As a general rule, recovery of damages to an automobile is limited to the cost of repair. Where, however, a vehicle is totally destroyed or so badly damaged that the cost of repair exceeds its value, the measure of damages is the value of the vehicle less its salvage value. Where an award of cost of repairs is the measure of damages in a case involving damages to an automobile, additional damages may be recovered for the diminution of value by virtue of the vehicle having been involved in an accident, provided proof of such diminished value is made. Loss of use may be recovered in Louisiana for the period necessary for the vehicle to be repaired, and generally the damages for loss of use are measured by the rental cost of the substitute vehicle. Uh, occasionally, you have a situation where um, you know there's a business vehicle. The loss of use has, has um, resulted in a loss of business to the company. Um, those kind of claims are made in Louisiana, but but very often um, it, they're hard to prove up, and very often a court will rule that those are too speculative. Um, so you have to really have your proof lined up if you're going to go go that route. Release of a tortfeasor by the insured. Um, yes, quite often a tortfeasor has no knowledge of a subrogation interest or lien, um, and they uh, they go ahead and they settle with the insured. Um, subrogation can be destroyed by settlement, but um, but only if the settlement's in good faith. If, if they've got knowledge, um, if the tortfeasor has knowledge of the subrogation interest or lien, then the subrogation could be intact. Um, the insured itself, of course, can destroy subrogation rights by releasing third parties if if there's no notice given. So obviously it's important in Louisiana for an automobile insurer to make sure if they think they're going to have a lien that everybody is on notice and you have written proof of that notice. Accepting partial settlements. Um, accord and satisfaction in Louisiana is another word for, for partial settlements. Um, quite often you have a situation where a check is, is just sent by a, a third party tort feeser. Um, the claim is discharged um, if it's an unliquidated or disputed amount by such a check and if it's conspicuous in writing that it's full satisfaction of the debt. Uh, this kind of comes into play a lot of times where the insured has gotten a quick check from a third party tortfeasor and you're trying to figure out if your subrogation rights have been destroyed. Um, the claim is not discharged if the, if the debtor um, didn't know that the check was tendered as full satisfaction and it doesn't have um, kind of the talismanic language on the back of it saying paid in full um, on the back of the check. The made whole doctrine is uh, extremely important in Louisiana to automobile subrogation. Um, it does apply, the made whole doctrine does apply to automobile subrogation. Um, there's a directive from the Louisiana Department of Insurance, it's called Directive 175. 
that um, it primarily deals with health insurers, but it's been expanded to, to talk about you know automobile insurers as well. Um, it applies to insurance policies and incorporates the, the made whole doctrine, precluding insurers from enforcing subrogation rights until their insureds are fully compensated for their injuries. Uh, it also obligates insurers to share in legal expenses incurred in recoveries against third parties. It usually comes in in the you know in a med payment kind of situation um, where the um, insured you know you, you've got a, a med pay of ten thousand dollars that you're subrogated to and you're trying to recover. The insured has um, has personal injuries greatly in excess to that. Uh, that's where the med whole doctrine is going to going to come in. It's going to be difficult to recover that med pay money under those circumstances. And it's extremely difficult if you don't have subrogation counsel involved at that point already. Um, it may not be economic to do it on a, on a $10,000 med pay, but, but sometimes you might have an interest that, that it is worthwhile. Um, but if you have subrogation counsel involved, they can, can fight the argument about, the, uh, about made whole applying because they can be involved in the case and have the information such as the medical records and, and the depositions and other documentation um, in order to, to argue against that as opposed to you're just getting a, a call out of the blue um, from a plaintiff attorney arguing that made whole applies. Of course, with property or collision um, damage that you're trying to recover in a subrogation scenario, made whole is not going to apply um, very often to that kind of scenario, and you don't have to worry about it quite as much in Louisiana. Usually, you've got an insurer that has a, a you know five hundred or thousand dollar deductible um, for collision damage, and uh, you know you're trying to recover a twenty, thirty, forty thousand um, dollar payment on, on a vehicle. Um, the insurer is not usually going to bring their own claim under those circumstances, and made whole is not really an issue. Another term um, for um, well, now we're talking about the common fund doctrine. It's kind of a, the, the scissor of made all. Uh, common fund doctrine, um, as you expect from most states, um, has to do with um, paying attorney's fees or proportionate share of costs when uh, you insure it aside their own attorney and pursue plans and you've segregated and kind of, as point attorneys like to say, ridden their coattails. In Louisiana, there's a common term called Moody fees. Um, that its genesis is from the workers' compensation um, case law and statutes for workers' compensation segregation. The term itself doesn't really mean, um, you know, specifically applied to automobile segregation, but it's used interchangeably. You'll also hear it used as if it's um, uh, black letter law um, that a, a plaintiff attorney will always get. Um, expenses back and a share of fees out of a, a subrogation lien. That's not the case. All Moody says and all the statutes say is that if the um, subrogating insurer is not actively represented by counsel, then they may owe a share of fees and expenses um, to the plaintiff counsel. Um, so if you have subrogation counsel in Louisiana retained, um, they can be involved in the case um, as long as they're doing something that actually helps a third party case, then you can diminish the Moody fees in that situation. The assessment of attorney's fees is justified only when the insurer chooses to rely on plaintiff counsel's efforts. Um, therefore, if a subrogation insurer is made aware of third party action, it saves money in that case to hire subrogation counsel and to intervene. At this point, before we go on with economic loss, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're just about uh, halfway through the seminar in a little bit. I'm going to give you the trivia question. Uh, again, as a reminder, if you uh, know the answer to the trivia question, you can go through the um, question pane on the control panel and answer it that way. Or you can email Jamie Breen at jbreen, J-B-R-E-E-N, at mwl-law.com. Which of these U.S. cities lies farthest west? A. Spokane, Washington. B. Reno, Nevada. Or C. Los Angeles, California. I'll read it one more time. Which of these U.S. cities lies the farthest west? A. Spokane, Washington. B. Reno, Nevada. Or C. Los Angeles, California. Now we're going to go on with the economic loss doctrine. Uh, Louisiana follows the minority rule, which essentially rejects the application of the economic um, loss um, doctrine. Um, it allows the plaintiff to recover and toward for economic loss without limitation. Um, 
we've got our liability on Products Liability Act um, 9, colon 2800.51, defines damages as recoverable for a product defect um, and to include damage to the product itself. Um, economic loss alone can be recoverable in Louisiana. Um, got a site there to the uh, the Atlee case. So generally, it's uh, generally recoverable under those circumstances. Deductible reimbursement. Um, there's not a, a Louisiana doesn't have a Department of Insurance regulation that mandates um, an insurer to recover the deductible for its insured when the insurer is going after their own um, their own subrogation. Um, however, check your policy. It might be um, it might be language in your policy which obligates the insurer to recover the deductible. And certainly, um, many times. Uh, Insurers have an expectation that if you're pursuing subrogation, and especially if they're assisting you and giving you testimony, that you're going to go after their deductible as well. Um, there's been situations in, in other states where there have been class actions brought against insurance companies for failing to collect deductibles, um, and sometimes even insurance companies, um, you know, they'll they'll sue for the deductible, and then they won't reimburse the insured for the deductible, um, or they figure they, they didn't actually get it. Um, so insurance companies tend to, uh, on a nationwide basis, um, do the same thing everywhere. So in Louisiana, you certainly can, can go after the deductible as well. Um, unless your policy gives um, the insurer the direct um, right to bring the claim for the deductible, in Louisiana, it's a good idea to bring your subrogation suit, if you're going after the deductible, to bring your subrogation suit in the name of both the insurance company and the insured. Um, or even bring it just simply on behalf of the insurer and then have language in the um, petition that the jury is not allowed to see that indicates that you're doing so on behalf of the insured for the deductible and also on behalf of the insurance company via its right of subrogation. If you don't bring uh, a claim in the name of the insured or be that specific in your policy, a defendant may claim um, that um, you don't have any right of action to, to bring um, a claim for that deductible which for a $500 automobile deductible is not the end of the world, but some of these policies um, have much larger and in, in other insurance types of insurance it could have a you know, five ten thousand dollars deductible. Multiple claims in excess of liability. Um, quite often you've got a situation where you've got a low um, limit um, on the other side, on the tortfeasor side, limit of insurance, and you've got multiple claims that are, are buying for that money. Um, Insurance companies on the defense side are very cautious about paying out to um, claimants when they are going to have multiple claimants um, still in line. They don't want to leave their insured um, potentially exposed to an excess verdict, um, both because they care about their insured, but also because they have a contractual obligation to protect their insured. However, um, if there are multiple claims, an insurance company can settle them out piecemeal and can even settle them out and exhaust the limits of liability. But they've got to do so, they've got to be reasonable about it. Um, the payments have to be reasonable. You, there can't be somebody who's got only a $10,000 claim and gets all of the $30,000 limits and then leaves somebody out in the cold. Um, that probably won't withstand scrutiny. So if you've got a small subrogation lien, and there, even though there's many, many claimants, um, you know, Go after it early. They sometimes they, they might want to knock out your subrogation claim and, and might pay it. I've I've seen situations where um, defendants, um, insurance companies have paid um, subrogation claim early first before they were even aware that there were going to be um, much larger personal injury claimants um, later on because um, they may not have sued till later. So it's worth bringing those claims. In Louisiana, we do have the collateral source rule. Um, that excludes evidence at trial um, as to amounts paid by um, insurance and other collateral sources to pay um, uh, medical bills. Typically, it's insurance. Um, the tortfeasor um, can't benefit, and an injured um, plaintiff's tort recovery um, cannot be reduced because of monies received by the plaintiff from the sources independent of the tortfeasor's contribution. The uh, collateral source rule um, entitles the plaintiff to recover the full value of their medical care. Um, often including the write-off amount, written-off amount, whether the plaintiff has paid some consideration, um, whenever they've paid some consideration for the collateral source benefit. Um, so as a practical matter, what that means in Louisiana is um, the, in a personal injury context, um, a plaintiff um, can 
um, go ahead and um, get the full payment of the medical bills, even though something less than the full charge of the medical bill was actually paid by the collateral source. Louisiana is a pure comparative fault state. Uh, revised statutes 2323 and 2324, they were amended, um, actually it's not revised statutes, I'm sorry, that's civil code articles 2323 and 2324, were amended oh, probably about 10 or 15 years ago, I guess, um, to make Louisiana a pure comparative fault state. Um, a uh, damaged party can recover even if it's 99% at fault. Um, but the recovery is going to be reduced by the damaged party's degree of fault. So there's there's not a situation here like in Texas where if there's 50%, you know, more than 50% comparative fault on the plaintiff, the plaintiff doesn't get anything. The plaintiff will get something even if they're 99% at, at fault here. But um, but you know it's going to be it's going to be reduced. The tortfeasor's liability is going to be reduced. And they're only going to pay their their 1% of fault, which if there are very large damages can be significant sometimes in the case. Um, now, if there are intentional torts, a defendant can be liable for um, for the whole percentage of, of fault of, of all the other or all the other defendants. Um, there's no assumption of risk in Louisiana. Um, even immune tortfeasors can be assessed fault in Louisiana. Quite often in a trial, you'll have a big fight about who's going to get put on the um, the jury verdict form in terms of um, who the jury or the judge is going to be allowed to apportion fault. A defendant is going to want to put everybody in the world on there. They're going to want to have the immune tortfeasor, I mean, not tortfeasor, the immune employer on there. They're going to want to have the claimant himself on there. Um, they're going to have um, they're going to want to have companies that um, that may have other bars, um, legal bars, on there. As long as there's some evidence at fault, the judge kind of has some discretion. But as long as there's some evidence at fault, the, a judge might put um, many different entities on that verdict form. Um, the only way to, to really knock one of those out is if one of those parties are um, deemed um, to be um, not have any fault at all, um, and um, and then um, they can get if they get out by summary judgment, then the court's not going to put them on the on the verdict form. Um, but if there's you know some sort of statutory bar, such as they're the employer, um, then they can still be on the verdict form. It's really only a no fault that keeps them off. Uh, I do have a winner to announce of the um, of the seminar question um, of the uh, of the question that we had a few minutes ago. The winner is John Gutierrez, G U T I E R R E Z. John Gutierrez is the the winner of our of our trivia question, and the answer to that was Reno, Nevada. Reno, Nevada is about 90 or 60 miles, actually, to the east of Los Angeles, actually, to the west of Los Angeles. So Reno, Nevada is the westernmost of those cities we mentioned. Congratulations to John Gutierrez. All right, the sudden emergency doctrine. Um, Louisiana, we've got, um, we, we sort of have um, a scaled down version of that. Um, an example is a defense of sudden unconsciousness. Um, if you have a sudden or momentary loss of consciousness when driving, um, that can be a complete defense um, to a claim based on negligence if such loss of consciousness was not foreseeable. Uh, my aunt actually just had that similar situation to her. She's driving along the interstate. Um, she um, is taking medication, um, and, but, and she had had some new medication, and she hadn't had any problems, but apparently a, a problem arose with it, and she blacked out on the interstate, luckily didn't hit anybody else. But uh, but she had no idea that that had happened um, was going to happen to her. So um, she would have been able to um, if she had hit anybody else probably would have been able to use this defense. Now that she's on notice that that medication was a problem, of course she can't use that defense anymore. Uh, a driver must show by clear and convincing evidence that his sudden presence in the opposite lane was due to an unexpected um, or unforeseen circumstance under which his, he has no control. That's the general sudden emergency doctrine that that you can take advantage of. Um, Seatbelt defense in Louisiana. We um, seatbelt use is required by law um, in Louisiana. However, the failure to wear a seatbelt is not um, is not a defense to a tort action 
or mitigation of damages. So just because somebody chose not to lose, use their seatbelt, um, they, they may be violating the law, they may get a ticket, but um, they are not, it's not going to bar them from the, some recovery if they are, are hurt. Bailment. Um, bailment is an interesting uh, cause of action in Louisiana. It's governed by um, Civil Code Article 2937. Um, it, it applies in situations like where you've got a parking shop, a repair shop, a dealership, any situation where an entity takes control of a vehicle from the owner and, and, and is, has it stored for some reason. And then there's something that happens which damages it. Uh, the bailer is the owner of the property. The bailey holds the property in trust. Um, for whatever purpose that may be, repair, et cetera. The elements of bailment are delivery of personal property to another for a specific purpose, acceptance of such delivery, express or implied contract, and understanding property will be, the, the property will be returned. The important thing about bail, bailment is once you show you know, that, that it was delivered, it was accepted, you had a contract, and the property was going to be returned, and that, then, of course, that the property was damaged, that shifts the burden of proof to the defendant to show that they used due care to safeguard um, that property. And that can be important. I had a case that I handled. Um, it was a fire subrogation case. Um, and um, we had um, a, a few very expensive cars that were being detailed um, that were in a repair shop. There was a fire, and um, there were some rags found on the floor. We, we could find the, the general origin, but the cause of the fire could not be determined by the experts, the exact cause, which normally would be a problem for us and bar, potentially bar a claim um, for fire subrogation, except that here we went under the theory of bailment, and we shifted the burden to the defendant to show that they used due care. And I was able, we were able to argue and get a very good um, settlement recovery because of the fact that they, they, the shop was a wreck. They had all kinds of flammable stuff all over the place. So even though we couldn't prove exactly which, which one had caught fire, um, it was enough to get over. Um, it was enough with the theory of bailment to, to get a recovery. The guest statute, um, family purpose doctrine, um, Louisiana doesn't have a guest statute. Um, we do have spousal or parent-child immunity. So um, you cannot, um, you know, you can't sue your spouse in Louisiana typically or a parent can't, you know, typically um, sue children. However, you can sue their insurance company. Um, if you got separate from your spouse, um, you can still, and your spouse does something, um, you know, which causes an accident to you. Um, you can still um, you can still sue under those circumstances. Same thing with a parent or child. Doesn't come into play very often though, in Louisiana, for obvious reasons. Negligent entrustment. Um, the general rule is owners of vehicle are, are, are not personally liable for the damages which occur while another is operating the vehicle. Um, but a lot of times, you know, you, you want to name, um, when you're bringing an automobile subrogation suit, um, and if you're concerned about the liability limits of the, uh, of the driver, um, a lot of times you want to name the owner of the vehicle anyway um, and see if there is a negligent entrustment um, issue. Um, they're gonna, you're going to have to prove that the um, owner had actual or constructive knowledge that the person he'd loaned the car to was incompetent or had some other kind of disability. Um, certainly, if you know you knew that they had been caught drunk driving before, if they had multiple driving infractions, all those are kind of things that um, that you might be able to uh, to get a negligent entrustment claim for. Dram shop liability. And Louisiana is a state that believes in an individual's right to have access to alcohol um, and expects that individual to drink responsibly. We were one of the last states um, in the union to get rid of our 18-year-old drivers, 18-year-old um, uh, uh, drinking age limit. Um, it's now 21, but we were 18 for a very long time. Uh, we have open container laws, so you can uh, walk down the street with a, a cup of alcohol, and that's that's not against the law. We have drive-through daiquiri and, and liquor stores. So uh, obviously, um, Louisiana is is going to have a dram shop um, statute that is going to. Um, keep sellers of alcohol immune, generally, from lawsuits. So, you know, you're at a bar and um, you, you have too much to drink. Um, the bartender even uh, encourages you to drink, potentially, and uh, you get in a car and you get in an accident. Um, as a subrogation insurer um, for the other party, you're not going to be able to usually um, sue that bar under a theory of, uh, of negligence. 
unless uh, there's minors involved, if they sold to a minor, or um, there's some sort of force or coercion that is involved um, in, uh, in, the, uh, in the drinking um, by the bar, or the alcohol content of whatever the person is drinking is misrepresented. Now, you know, the, the uh, bartender slips a mickey to the driver or something like that. Um, you'll be able to get around the dram shop immunity in that kind of situation. Statutes and limitations in Louisiana is known as prescription. That's one of our, our civilian French heritage words. Um, so you'll notice that you've, everywhere else in the country says statute of limitations, but in Louisiana, same thing, we just call it prescription. Personal injury and property damage prescription in Louisiana is one year. You have one year from the date of the accident to file suit. Um, you can file suit that last day. Um, if that day falls on a Sunday, you can still file suit typically on the, on the next day that's open, you know, on Sunday or, or another holiday. Uh, uninsured motor subrogation um, is two years, so an, an, an insured can sue their own UM carrier um, two years um, you have, they have for that. Now, if you are in Louisiana, if you add a defendant, um, let's say you file suit timely against one def a defendant A, and then you find out that defendant B may have had some liability, you can um, amend your petition in Louisiana, and you can add defendant B after the prescriptive period has run, you know, two years into it, whatever. Um, and it's going to relate back um, and, and still be a timely filing. It will relate back to the, the filing of the original petition if those defendants are what's called jointly and severably liable. And that means that they are both assessed some degree of fault. So in that situation, you sue defendant A timely, you sue defendant B 18 months later, um, you go to trial and defendant A gets 1% of fault and defendant B gets 99% at fault, you're going to be able to recover against defendant B. That is allowed. However, if defendant A at trial gets no fault at all, or if they get out by a summary judgment motion, or if they're dismissed um, with prejudice at some point, um, then um, that means that they're not jointly and severally liable, uh, liable anymore, and the claims against defendant B are going to be prescribed. So, you know, you've got more flexibility than in some other common law states where you, you can't substitute a defendant absent some kind of fraud or mistake or something like that. You've got a little bit more wiggle room in Louisiana, but you've got to be careful. If, if that defendant you initially um, filed suit against is uh, not going to end up having any liability at all, then, then the, the responsible tortfeasor who you didn't timely sue um, may be able to get out later. Um, you still may be able to settle the claim, but it's, um, it's, it's kind of a dangerous situation. And uh, products liability, we didn't mention that. Products liability is, is one year in Louisiana. We, we do have some limited um, Discover, rights of discovery that can extend that, um, but generally it's, it's one year. Recovery of uh, cost and uh, attorney's fees in Louisiana. Um, you can, um, you can rec we don't have a statute that um, allows for, um, well, we don't have a general right um, of attorney's fees um, and costs. You know, we don't have a loser pays or anything like that. Any um, attorney's fees that are typically awarded have to be awarded by statute in Louisiana, um, and there's some things that are a specific statute, but generally not, not in, the, in the tort context. The uh, one uh, way you can get costs back, not attorney's fees, but you can get costs are from an offer of settlement, um, or technically it's really called an offer of judgment. And that kind of situation arises where you um, are in litigation, um, you think the other party is being unreasonable, and so you make an offer of judgment to them, um, or you think that they're just really, you know, not wanting to settle and they're going to settle on the doorsteps and running up costs. Um, you make an offer of judgment to them, which is something you file and you say, if I'm the plaintiff, let's say, um, I file one, I say that I will um, make an offer of judgment of $25,000, and you have to be very specific. You have to say 25000 inclusive of costs, litigation costs, prejudgment interest, everything. Um, and um, in that situation, if when you go to trial, um, if the plaintiff has asked for twenty-five thousand, you go to trial, and it comes within twenty-five percent of that mark. You know, if, if there's twenty-five percent or less of the twenty-five thousand dollars, the plaintiff will get their all of their um, litigation costs in that circumstance. 
Um, and that can be, you know, that can be a good a good tool to use sometimes. And the defendant can use it as well, of course. They can make an offer, a, you know, lower offer, and uh, and see if it comes within 25% of that. You can make multiple offers like that. You can do one at one point in the litigation and, and do another later. It's um, not um, not usually a problem. All right, suspension of uh, driver's licenses in Louisiana. This is an effective tool in automobile subrogation. Um, you go and you um, you get a uh, judgment against a third-party tortfeasor driver who um, either has inadequate insurance or doesn't have insurance at all. Um, there are a number of ways to collect on that kind of judgment. Um, as you would expect, um, their home is protected. Um, but you can um, go after their wages. You can get a garnishment of wages. Um, you can serve discovery upon them and to their employer and find out when they're paid. And you can you can seize checking accounts. You know you can have the constable go to their their home and seize their truck. You can do all those kind of things that you can do in other states. And one of the things you can also do is is to have their driver's license suspended. And that's really one of the most effective ways to collect on a judgment when the judgment is fairly small, because it forces um, that tortfeasor who's who's got a judgment against them to come to the table and stop ignoring you, because they're going to need to drive. Obviously, they're going to need to get to their their job. They're going to even if they're not working, they're going to want to drive. And um, they may drive with a suspended license. We have many drivers in Louisiana who drive with suspended, li suspended licenses. But eventually, they're going to have to get that license reinstated, and they're going to have to deal with you. Um, you can get an administrative suspension in Louisiana. Um, it can be um, suspended by the Secretary of State at the request of the damaged party. Uh, 20 days after receipt of an accident report, um, the Secretary, um, if they don't have the evidence on file um, that a party has insurance, they'll send notice of the um, of suspension of the driver's license. Um, the suspension will remain until the person deposits the required security, or one year has passed and no action for damages has been filed. Um, if there's a judgment, when the uh, commissioner of insurance receives a certified copy of the judgment from a suit that's been filed, uh, he'll suspend the driver's license of the judgment debtor. The suspension will continue until the judgment is stayed or satisfied. Judgment's not required in order for a subrogated carrier to submit a claim for property judgment, um, property damage, or injury. Uh, we're going to go over some uh, questions um, now. Um, we've got a little bit of, of time left. We may um, may end up a, a little bit early for you guys. I do want to uh, refer back also to um, some of the subrogation charts on our website. We have subrogation charts there um, about a lot of these topics. I mentioned the med. We also have a subrogation chart for the made whole doctrine in all 50 states, um, for the economic loss doctrine in all 50 states, for deductible reimbursement laws in all 50 states, um, for the comparative negligence and comparative fault laws of all 50 states, for the sudden uh, medical um, or emergency um, doctrine um, in all 50 states, um, statute of limitations in all 50 states, and suspension of driver's license in all 50 states. We have charts at our website, mwl-law.com, that are free charts. Anybody can look at them. And they're, uh, they're very good resources, and they're, they're kept um, very up to date. All right, a few uh, questions here. Um, and again, if you have uh, submitted questions that I don't get to at this point, um, I am going to be reviewing those after the seminar. It might take me a day or so, but I will uh, get back to you with those answers. So please um, do send them in. Uh, one question is, uh, we often hear that Louisiana law is so different because it is a civilian law system or civil law system. Can you explain why Louisiana is a civil law state and what that means? Yeah, as an attorney in Louisiana, I get that question a lot. Um, a lot of times people who aren't familiar with Louisiana think it's a completely like a foreign country and they say, you got that civil law down there and you got that French law, it's got to be different. And a lot of things about it yeah, are different. There are, there are many aspects that are different, but mostly it's, it's a difference in terminology. Um, but the, the root of our civilian law system is the fact that we originally were a Spanish and then a French colony. And when we were a French colony um, was when the Napoleonic Code was put into effect in France, which, um, which put all the laws into statutes as opposed to the English common law system where you're relying upon a bunch of different cases and interpreting the cases. Uh, they uh, French scholars wanted to make it simple, and so Louisiana adopted that, and we had our civil code, which um, was primarily um, it was 
put in, in effect in French times, was in French, and then around 1870 during Reconstruction was um, put into kind of the form it looks like today um, with obviously amendments since then. But it uh, essentially means that the root of Louisiana law is that statute. If you want to find out what negligence is in Louisiana, you go to um, Louisiana Civil Code Article 2315, and it, it, it talks about how negligence is the, is the want of prudence and, you know, I don't have it in front of me, but essentially it defines negligence for you, um, and uh, pretty much you know everything else. Now, we still have a lot of common law aspects of our law because you still have a lot of cases which interpret that statute, interpret 2315 and, and other statutes. Um, so we still case law is still important, but you start with the civil code. Um, why is Louisiana statute of limitations called prescription? Well, that's kind of the same thing I just answered a little bit. Um, it's uh, it, it comes from the, the French system. It comes from the uh, civilian law system, the term prescription as opposed to statute of limitations. If a third party, here's another question, if a third party insurer in Louisiana denies coverage, um, but I think the coverage position is incorrect, what are my options in Louisiana? Well, Louisiana is actually a really good place for that um, because of the direct action statute. In other states, um, if you've got a situation where um, you're trying to recover and the third party insurer contacts you and says, hey, we didn't have coverage, we canceled this policy you know, right beforehand or some other reason, you usually can't get any information out of them. Um, they usually won't even tell you why they declined coverage. Um, and then you're in a situation where you have to pretty much go get judgment against the uninsured tortfeasor, get an assignment from them of their claim, and then go back and try to sue you know, for bad faith sue the third party insurer and you got a lot of trouble for maybe a small amount of recovery. In Louisiana you've got your direct action statute that allows you to sue the insurer directly. So if you think that the third party's um, uh, position, coverage position is bogus or if they just won't tell you what it is and you want to find out if it's bogus or not, um, you can file suit and sue the insured and sue the insurer and, and you know, conduct discovery against the insurer and get a copy of their policy and all of their um, declination of, of coverage or reservation of rights letters and, and explore that and it's you know much more cost effective than it would be otherwise. Why should I even pursue subrogation if made whole applies in Louisiana? Well we touched on that a little bit. Um, yeah, you know made whole is, is probably gonna going to affect um, your um, your medical subrogation recoveries depending on you know the size of the accident, size of the injuries, um, depending on whether you have subrogation counsel in, involved who can assist with that or not. But but most of your property subrogation stuff, it's really made whole is not going to be an issue. Um, you, you don't typically have an insured who has a lot of uninsured losses that they're trying to recover that are going to prime your property coverage claim. Now it can happen certainly, um, but um, but again, you know, as long as you know you've got subrogation counsel in that circumstance and they're they're proven up. I mean, it's important that they prove up um, their full property subrogation um, claim so that they can make sure that there's an adequate recovery either by settlement or judgment to cover both of them. Well, that's going to pretty much wrap it up here. Um, just got a couple minutes left. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for, um, for attending. I uh, appreciate it very much. Again, uh, my name is, is James Buson Leonard. I'm the managing partner of our New Orleans office of Matisse and Wickert and Lair. And if we can ever assist you all out in any way, please let us know. Thanks and have a great rest of your day.